Hey y'all, it's CJ from Smoky Beginnings, and today we're going to be going over how to smoke a chuck eye steak on your pit barrel cooker. So stay tuned as we go over the smoked chuck eye steak recipe. It's going to lead to deliciously tender results. You're not going to want to miss this one. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go. First, what we're going to do is season our steak. And I chose the chuck eye steak as it's a relatively economical steak. Um, when you're looking at like steaks like Wagyu or prime rib, those other cuts of meat are going to be more expensive and a little bit less economical. What we're going to want to do is season both sides with a binder such as olive oil. Then what we're going to do is a barbecue rub of your choice. Today I chose Buck's All Purpose Barbecue Seasoning. What you're going to want to do is make sure that you get both sides and every single edge of the steak. Once you have seasoned all sides of the steak, let it rest for a couple minutes. In the meantime, you're gonna to wanna to get your pit barrel cooker started. One additional thing that you may wanna to do to the steak is insert a meat probe. Today I'm gonna to be using the Meter Plus meat probe. I'll leave a link in the description. Now that the steak has been rested and it has been seasoned, and we have the meat thermometer inserted, we're going to place the prepared steak onto the grill grate. One thing to mention here is that I have opened the bottom vent, which is going to increase airflow, which is going to increase the internal temperature of the pit barrel cooker. Once I have this steak position, I'm going to go ahead and insert the rebar for the air circulation and then I'm going to close the lid and then I'm going to wait probably five to six minutes before checking the temperature. So it's been about seven minutes and it's time to check the steak. Everything's looking good right now. We're getting a nice color. Uh, we're getting a nice smoke on this steak. I'm going to go ahead and flip it onto the other side. Let it cook for another six to seven minutes before pulling it from the grill. What I'm looking for is a temperature of somewhere between 125 and 135 when I'm looking to pull this steak from the grill. Since I have the Meter Plus meat probe, I can tell the doneness of the steak. And right now it's just not ready. So I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes, put the lid back on, and we'll check it here in just a little bit. While waiting for the steak to come up to temp, I'm gonna go ahead inside and get a frying pan on the stove and get it up to temp. What I want to do is get this pan screaming hot because what we're going to do is do a reverse sear on the steak. What I like to do is put the steak in the pan, push the steak down in order to make sure it has good contact between the pan and the steak, and then add a couple tablespoons of butter. Usually what you're going to see is people add fresh herbs like thyme and rosemary. You could do, you could do that as well. And then you're just kind of basing the steak. Uh, what I like to do is just kind of Leave it on one side for a couple of minutes, like one or two minutes, and then flip it over, let it go for another one or two minutes, flip it over again for another one or two minutes in order to get the desired texture that I'm looking for, which I'm just looking for just a very minimal char, crust, or sear on the steak. I'm not looking to burn the steak. Um, and just keep in mind that when you do this reverse here, that your steak is going to continue to cook so make sure that you do it prior to the level of doneness that you're looking for. So I've now reached the level of sear that I want on this steak. So I'm going to pull it from the stove top and I'm going to let it rest for about anywhere five to 10 minutes before slicing. The steak has been resting for about 10 minutes. It's time to slice it. And what I'm going to do is cut against the grain to ensure that the results are tender and juicy. So as you can see here, I'm just cutting this into thin little strips. We're going to be serving this to the kids. Uh, we're going to also be putting it into some tacos and using it almost like fajita meat here. Um, but we're also can do it in sandwiches. You can do it as is. Uh, it's very versatile when you cut it into thin strips. If you like content like this, make sure to like and subscribe as is the best way to support this channel. Also check out our blog at smokybeginnings.com. We'll have the recipe located there. 
One of the benefits of cooking this steak is that I get to taste it first. So right now what we have is like a medium well done piece that is smoked to perfection. I'm gonna do a little tug here so it's tender, but it still has just a little bit of a pull to it. Overall, this was a delicious steak. I would definitely recommend smoking your steaks from here on out. Until next time, have a good one. Keep those fires burning and those taste buds tingling. This is CJ with Smoky Beginnings.